Joshua. And I'm Marie. And we are Bold Follower. And we're going to walk you through the steps, the way that they used to make covenants, which is an agreement or a contract in a way, um, in the old biblical times. So you can see how God made a covenant with us. See, back in the day, when the people used to read scripture, they knew what a covenant was. So they would see these steps and clearly know that God made a covenant with us. Now today, outside of the marriage or wedding ceremony, we don't really see many of these, and if we do, they're not nearly as intense. Right. Uh, God took covenants very seriously. Ancient people took them very seriously. And We're gonna he still does. Yeah. We're going to show you about nine different steps, and we have actually links below as well and all the details so you can find them within Scripture, and we can see how God loves us and made a covenant with us. Now one of the first steps of making a covenant would be to take off your coat, your covering, and give your covering to the other person. Now she has my covering. Now the covering means that she has my life, she has all of me, she has my total being. It's pledged to you. And she also kind of looks like me, too. The next step would be to take off the belt and give it. Now, giving the belt is important because belts don't just hold up pants, they hold up swords and shields weapons and things like that. So when I give you the belt, it basically means all of your battles are my battles and I will fight for you. This is all of my strength and all of my abilities I give to you. Our protection, like God is our protection. Mm -hmm. Now we would cut the covenant. Cutting the covenant typically means you take an animal and you would cut it right down the middle so you can walk through the blood of it. Okay, we'll do something less intense, though. Animal cracker. So, we would take the animal, you would kill it, break it in half, and then you would walk in a figure eight. And then point down and say, in the same way this animal died, may this happen to us if we ever break this covenant. Making a covenant was a very, very serious deal. Now what you would do is you would mix the blood. You would typically make a small cut on the arm and then you would mingle the blood. The blood is considered life, so you are saying my life becomes yours and yours becomes mine. The two become one. The next step would be to have the names. Now the names would either be exchanged or a letter from the name would be exchanged, or they both would change. It just depends. We would exchange some part or all of the name. Now is the visible marker. Typically the visible marker is a scar, often underneath the arm, that's the exact same on both people. So you could see the correlating scar to commemorate the covenant. Now the covenant underneath the rib that was cut or pierced um, is often replaced today by uh, a ring, something like that, that, that you can also use to show that you are in covenant. Now, the next item would be the covenant terms. Now, you would have a scroll that had the terms of the covenant on it, often things like, you will have no other husbands before me, or a list of all the different terms or commands you'd have to keep to keep the covenant. Uh, it would also talk about how you would share everything. Everything I have is yours, everything you have is mine, etc. Now the next step would be to eat the memorial meal. Now it's often grape juice or wine because that's considered the blood of the grape and bread, which is considered the flesh. So I would drink the blood of the covenant and so would you, having my life come into you and your life come into me and then take the bread, which is the flesh, and have your flesh or your body come into me and my flesh my body come into you. We are becoming one. Now the final step is often to plant a memorial. Some sort of permanent memorial you would create. Often it was it was a tree uh, or some, port, some sort of wood that was in the ground. And these covenants weren't just for the two people making them. They were often for the descendants, the children, the grandchildren, the great-grandchildren, etc. So this tree or this memorial marker would serve as a permanent reminder of the covenant for generations to come. We hope that you've enjoyed this list of about nine different items that are typically found in ancient 
covenants. We hope that you take your own time and try and find these throughout Scripture. They're all throughout Scripture. We have lots of links down below with a lot of information on how you can find them and realize how God made a serious covenant with us and with you if you're a Christian. If not, you can join into that covenant by accepting how God came as Jesus and died for our sins and did several of these things throughout his lifetime to have a covenant with you if you'd simply accept him. Obey and be faithful to him as he is faithful to you. Yeah. So, bless you guys. Like and subscribe, and we'll see you next time.